The regroove is a 32-channel mixer in Reason, but it's only for grooves. Before we start looking at regroove, let's listen to this little song. To start with, you can bring up the regroove mixer by clicking the regroove button at the bottom right-hand corner of the transport, and it shows up either in your rack or in your sequencer. And what you have in the regroove mixer are 32 channels of groove. You can see D1 through D8 here. Here's A1 through A8. So 32 channels, and those grooves can be turned on or off and applied to any note lane in your sequence. Now, this anchor point here lets me determine where the groove kicks in. For example, if I have an opening bar, a lead-off bar of my song, I can set the anchor point to bar 2. And then the global shuffle will control any of the devices that have a shuffle button, like Redrum. When I turn on shuffle, the amount of the shuffle is controlled by the global shuffle knob. That's no shuffle. And that's a lot of shuffle. So at a minimum, you can use the global shuffle button from Regroove to control your matrix, your RPG-8, your redrum, anything that has a shuffle button, or any of these channels can defer to the global shuffle by clicking the global shuffle button. But the advantage of having 32 channels of Groove means that you can assign any note lane to a specific channel of your regroove mixer. Now you can only do this on note lanes, and that's very important. So if you have a pattern, you have to convert it to notes. And then once you've selected the groove channel, then in your regroove mixer, you can assign a groove to that channel. And we can browse using a patch browser for a groove that already exists. And there are loads in the factory sound bank. For example, Let's bring up a shuffle groove from the MPC folder. You can see it's been loaded into the channel A1 of my groove mixer. I've turned off that channel. I still have my pattern going in my redrum, so I want to turn that off. So that's my redrum clip. Let's turn on the groove. And a groove can comprise rhythm, length of notes, and even velocity of the notes. So this is a pretty drastic shuffle. I can change the amount of the groove by lowering my groove fader. And I can pick another patch, either by selecting from the list here, which are all the groove patches in that folder, like any other patch browser, or finding some other folder and some other patch. Notice even the velocity changes with the groove. Groove will affect both rhythm and velocity. I can slide the groove forward and backward. You can hear it's a little behind the beat here. And I can shuffle a little bit more by changing my shuffle knob. Now I'm assigning my Kong and my Thor to that same groove channel, A1. change A1 to a different groove. So all three of my lanes have been assigned to that same groove channel. By the way, there is a pre-align button which quantizes the notes before applying the groove. Sometimes it's a good idea to check that box. Now, right now, all three lanes are assigned to the same groove channel, but we can assign them to different groove channels. So I just assigned my Kong to A2, and let's add a groove to A3 and assign the Thor to that. Now, presumably, these grooves are fairly similar, so they work together. But there's the Thor. Let's bring in the Kong. three 
lanes, all three devices. I just assigned the redrum to the second channel. So it's very easy to experiment with grooves, as you see. So it's up to you whether you have multiple tracks, multiple lanes assigned to the same groove channels or different groove channels for different lanes. There's also an edit button with each lane and it brings up the tool window, the third page of the tool window that lets me select a groove channel, shows me the patch that's been loaded and lets me change some things like the impact of timing and velocity from the groove, changing the impact of note lengths and also changing the timing of the groove. We can bring up the patch browser right from this window. And of course, we can save our own grooves and use them whenever we want. Now, one last thing is this Get From Clip button. What that allows me to do is select something that I've played and extract the groove from that. Extract the rhythm, the length of the notes, the velocity, and so forth. Let's record a new Thor pattern that we'll use to grab a groove from. Okay, I deliberately played that sloppy. Now what we're going to do is select that clip and then choose Get From Clip. Now you'll notice a new groove, User1, has been created and I can assign everything to that same groove except the Thor, which I don't need the groove since that's where the groove came from. And now let's see what happens when we play these together. Here's the redrum. So clearly, if I had played the Thor pattern a little better, we would have a little tighter groove. But you can see how all the lanes now are synced up to that Thor groove that we just created. Now, at some point, you may want to take the groove and apply it to the notes. So actually write the groove information into the note clip. And to do that, you choose Commit to Groove from the Groove dropdown. It writes the notes right into the note clip and turns the groove off. And that's a look at the Regroove Mixer.